and hello guys welcome to another episode from role of diplomacy and in this uh, role for diplomacy we have not one but two guests and representing the kit studios we have ian t small founder and ceo and also francisco duarte as head writer hello. and with their teammates they publish indie press tabletop rpg adventures and supplements as well as build their open community uh, to share the love of tabletop RPGs and gaming. So welcome guys, welcome to the show. Hello. Hello. Thank nice to be here. Um, so uh, in this second season of Role for Diplomacy, uh, we have our main focus in 2019 uh, to learn from creators and designers uh, and help the Portuguese community uh, to create and publish their own RPGs. Um, but first, we have to do all the that's the things that we do in the, the, the beginning of the show. That's our ads time. And thanks all the people that support us uh, and cheer for us. So uh, we have to ha to give a big thanks to Voodoo Plays. And I'm going to show uh, show you uh, uh, the, the site of the place, the Portuguese RPG shop and our sponsors since uh, 2018. Um, and for those who don't, don't know them, they are an online shop for RPG and for board games. And they also have rare books. Uh, and if you want any type of these RPG books, you can contact them. And they, even if they don't have it, they will sure uh, manage to help you uh, finding uh, where you can uh, have your, uh, your book. So uh, don't forget that you always have 5% uh, of any buy that you do in the uh, in the Voodoo Place shop. Uh, you have only to do the hashtag role initiative in your coupon in the payment section. So just go to the Facebook and, and say shout and do a, a like and go to the sites and just try to buy something that you really like. And certainly but not least we have to share our patrons and our patrons we, we have a lot of patrons now, for me at least. I, I, I didn't I didn't thought that yeah. it was something that's a, that could be a thing. But now we all have we have fourteen patrons. One one of them just miss. I think uh, the dog wobbling just gave him a blow and he's is dead or something. But Marsh is Kill just Steeler. starting. Yeah, just starting. So guys. Um, we have our patron that we have our objectives we have a knob goblin to kill and if you want to help us you can do your attacks and your spells uh, and uh, help us to kill this creature that will give our the, their loot and these loot will be uh, working better for you guys so if you want to help us just become a patron or just follow us and uh, share for us like you do as every day like every day uh, so guys this is something that uh, that we are going to, to, to talk about, is about RPG. And in this March we have uh, offered our patrons um, an Alpha RPG from Daniel Carvalho, one of our uh, team members, uh, that, is, uh, that is building uh, an RPG that started in the, in the RPG 200 words uh, contest, uh, that is called Asylum. So guys, I'm Really, I really want to know uh, about what you think about that RPG, that alpha testing. So I want the patrons that uh, receive it to talk to us and give us feedback from it so we can develop uh, a little bit further. Uh, and I really, really hope you like it, guys. So, and that was a lot of words. <laughs> so, uh, Juki, uh, ask the first question, please, or I will keep talking. Oh, okay. <laughs> Uh, let's get on with it. Well, uh, thank, thank you, esteemed guests, for being here tonight. Uh, I know it's a Sunday, uh, but we're going to have uh, a nice talk. Uh, let's start with um, Ian. Um, hi, Hello. Ian. How are you? So, uh, I'm fine, thank you. It's a wonderful day here in Portugal. So tell me, who is Ian T. Keeper Small, and what does he do? He is I. Uh, he herds cats, mostly. Um, I, I have an actual house full of them. But no, I, I also um, I run. I'm, I'm the CEO of the Cube Studios and uh, the founder. 
And primarily, especially on an RPG side, I am the producer. I am running around everywhere in the background trying to make sure that no one's locked, everyone has something to do, and more importantly, no one's really angry at someone else for that thing they need. And usually that means oh, that I get to be the effigy of the angry man running around in the background going, where are all of my things? <laughs> um, yes, everyone just assumes that I'm the angry person. I'm really not. I'm angry for others so they don't have to be. Uh, but yeah, I um, founded the Keep Studios. Oh, I think it's so five now. years ago now. Um, which was just a, I was writing and programming video games uh, in Unity at the time, and I had worked with uh, the MWL team and those guys before, and they kind of, some of them wandered over and had an idea, and I was like, I'm already working on a thing, and we started making a game. Then we realized we were in over our head, because we, we did the standard issue indie developer thing of, hey, what if we tried to make a triple-A game? with three people and not nearly enough because yeah because we came up in the MWL team we're used to having like you know 20 testers and the, me is one of the three programmers and a squadron of artists and then we realized oh this is an error um but it took us a while to like kind of figure that out but the entire time we kept on playing RPGs and things like that and we realized that what we were wanting to do was Video games were our way up. We wanted to have tell stories, and um, it, really, tabletop gaming was our core love. So now we are a publishing company and also a um, a community of people who have like advice and discussion on any kind of tabletop gaming, not just D and D. Um, and some of us are slightly rabid about numbers, and may have written giant blog posts about probability in the last week. <laughs> um, guilty. Um, but, uh, people like that. I don't know why. Um, but, uh, yeah, so that's basically what we do. And we are publishing DCC Adventures right now. Some other secret things. So, uh, currently you are creating RPG supplements, as you said, for DCC. That's the That's right? Yeah, um, currently they're for DCC. One of the secret projects is, if things go well, is having um, conversion pamphlets so that all of the encounters can be used in 5e well, OGL, which means they can be used in D&D, &D, and anything that runs on OGL as well. So not just D&D &D per se. That, yes, the, yeah. the open gaming license is very uh, forgiving of the of converse, conversions and... Uh, mm -hmm batching and doing all of that so it's, it's a very good idea very much so as long as you don't call it D D, or are certain wizards who live on the edge of the ocean they come after you <laughs> oh, <yeah>. oh god <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's true i i believe it is that is true we're very careful about that we write 5e we do not write D and D. but you but it's compatible with it Hopefully, people won't get confused with the other mm -hmm. games. That lately, actually, in 2008, there was a bunch of five, fifth editions for a bunch of games like Vampire the Masquerade or uh, Legend of the Five Rings. <laughs> we, mm -hmm. When we talk about 5e right now, uh, there is a general consensus that we are talking about though that game with the um, the same letter divided by the ampersand. <laughs> yes that's somewhat fair I mean to be honest it's one of the few games which has almost been defined for about three editions as like well actually for about four second ed third 3.5 fourth and then fifth and yeah when it's de facto they can you just get away with that <laughs> very well uh, thank you <laughs> Uh, we also have another guest. Uh, hi, Francisco. Hello. Uh, we've already had the pleasure of having uh, Francisco working with us in Roll Initiative. He has been one of our dungeon masters for exactly Dungeon Crawl Classics. Uh, he had uh, two or three sessions yeah. already in your belt. Classics. 
Oh yeah. Uh, so how are you? I'm doing quite fine, man. How are you doing? <laughs> fine, thank you. So, what have you been up to with the Keep Studios? Well, mostly doing uh, DCC as a thing. Uh, I actually uh, met uh, uh, Ian and the rest of the guys, as he said, when we were we were um, working on MacWarrior Living Legends back in the day. Uh, I actually approached them to write stuff for MacWarrior Living Legends. If I'm not mistaken, uh, I ended up writing a story for the for the game, and um, it's actually a funny story how we got together again because. If I'm not mistaken, I kind of drift off when the, the MWLL came down at the time. Um, and some years later, I act, um, they contacted me because they were creating this, uh, this studio, uh, Keep Studios, and asked me if I wanted to, to work with them again. It's actually funny because it was at the time where I was uh, on the low point in my life. So they actually helped me uh, bring me back back up again uh, and um, at the time again they were, we were they were working on the video games and uh, I, I came in to help them write instrumental materials and also because they needed a tank in their Numenera game All right, yeah. <laughs> wait a minute why do I feel guilty about that I'm not the one who needed a tank I was running the game it was the rest of the party who were like, uh, this is our friend, he's playing now. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I guess. <laughs> it's how it happened. Uh, that's not even an uh, exaggeration either. One night there was a player, they were like, he's in the group now. <laughs> <laughs> that's so good. <laughs> and then, like... I never, I had never played a tabletop RPG before when we started playing the Manu, and I was completely blown away by it. I had been wanting to play for years, but never had a chance. And now I had a chance. I got completely addicted to it. Thank you guys. And then, um, then we started making experiences, and finally I just simply start writing away. And after a while, I, I when. We decided to make the change to start doing the RPG stuff. After a few months, I got back to them and I was like, hey, I did this. And we published this. And we've been working on it. Uh, yeah. I remember that slightly differently. I remember you coming to asking help about the adventure and I kept looking at it going, <laughs> yeah. You know, I can print this, right? You know, we could yeah, just, yeah. you just, you went, he's like, he did the stereotypical, I'm going to make my first adventure, comes back with a home, and I'm just like, please let me sell your thing. <laughs> yeah, right. You got right. paid it. <laughs> yeah. So good. Um, I, I remember, um, and Joaquin also remembers because we talked about it, um, the first time that we saw the Keep Studios was after a role for Diplomacy show. Uh, one of our uh, b big one because we had a lot of people and uh, Joaquin uh, told Andre to, uh, hey, let's raid the Keep Studios because there's a Portuguese there. And it starts it's like that. I think it's almost six months now, I think. Uh, six months, yeah, six go. It's, it's six months, I think, or more. No, more. It's close more. to the year. A little close more. to the year, yeah. Um, and then we started to uh, keep doing it because keep studios, keep doing it. Uh, um, <laughs> 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 um, and we, I, I have the pleasure of being a partner from Francisco in the NanoRemo because he's, he's also participated. Uh, yeah, and as uh, we start to talk, and uh, one one thing lead to another, and is streaming DCC already three times, and I hope he's going to do the uh, at least one more because my my character are still alive, so I I, yeah, I still want to play them. <laughs> yeah. yeah, do you need some help, Francisco? I can help. Ian, I I, I really thought that uh, in the funnel. I uh, I went to three characters to one in a very short period of time, but Francisco is very very sweet and he just killed one PC in the whole session. So 
Damn, man. And Francisco is freezing? Oh, no, it's not freezed. Okay. <laughs> no, no, he's just very still. <laughs> he's very still. So, um, just let us to get back together and back to, to track, uh, which of uh, RPG product uh, you have made is your favorite? And why? And I would like to Ian go first, and then Francisco, and both uh, answer this question. Hey, published mm. or unpublished? Even if it's something you've created, That's not just fair. To, yeah, yeah, sure. just to, <laughs> just to um, play with your friends or just to show someone off. Hmm. Um. Let's see. Out of our own. Uh... Yeah. I, I think my my favorite is messing with people because I mean I one of the ones I definitely had a big part in writing it was helped so much now is the um the, the super secret next one we aren't even promoting really yet is the uh, compendium of powers and patrons because oh man I wrote a lot of, we were like well we wrote a lot of gods I uh, we wrote DCC deities and we went so I don't know how much you've really played DCC and how deeply, but have you ever noticed wizards seem to have gotten all the love? Mm -hmm. Like, they get patrons and spells, and they get all kinds of things. The clerics are just like, here's your, like, you know, cleric template. And we went, that's not, that's not good. <laughs> we wrote our, we wrote a tome. I, <laughs> I did it in Francisco on this one, and we, uh, yeah, we, we made new gods, and we made terrible gods based in something along the lines of, like, an as that well, Central American religions mixed with some Norse and Greek. Ooh. And it's, yeah. That's really exciting. We're bad people. <laughs> <laughs> um, the first one I created was for a druid because the um, actually our player Ben uh, was playing, um, and he always wanted to like he liked play Pathfinder, and he liked druids, and he wanted to do the wild shaped druid and. I was like, well, I mean, that's reasonable. There's druids in there. That's a reasonable ask. DCC doesn't have anything like Wild Shape. I'm like, there's nothing saying a god can't make you with a divine aid check. So I wrote what I describe as Poison Ivy the Goddess. <laughs> I wrote a god of, of plants and plant life that is not the good god. That is very... Uh, very, I wrote it. That's that's how my team describes it. It's, it's very mean. Um, yeah, yeah, it's it's loving in the. Are you a plant? All oh, you are, my children. It it hates uh, the goddess. Hates herbivores. Like it hates cattle, deer, and things like that. But it likes carnivores because those eat things that eat plants. So, yeah. Okay, I I think you have a lot of fun making it. Yeah. <laughs> and. What about you, Francisco? Okay. Um, when we started doing this stuff, uh, we um, were we kind of run a mini campaign on the um, Shadow Mountains, mm -hmm. and uh, me and Andrew, another member of the team, we actually did a small adventure that we we use only for ourselves, uh, and it was the first thing we did as as an adventure. Uh, the f it was, I think it was the first time we were not using uh, modules for or DCC uh, errands. And uh, I had some ideas that um, I sometimes use in my uh, games with my friends here where I live. And I, it's not as good as Sword and Jungle Deep or Soul for Nation Dark, not even close. It was the first thing we did. And I, I still recall those days where me yeah. and Andrew were like writing madly at the same time and sharing ideas in, in real time. Uh, we did I ever even see it. that adventure? I think you did, but it was <laughs> five years ago. Yeah, that might have been one of those they, they didn't really like let me tear it apart, which is my other <laughs> of what I Yeah, but, but if you want to make a small adventure and terrorize, I mean, amuse you with it. <laughs> It was it was kind of your boot camp, right? Exactly. Oh, uh, nice. But you, lately you have written a new supplement for DCC called uh, Soul for the Ocean Dark. 
Uh, we've already seen some pictures from it, but what is it all about? Uh, Sulfurous and Dark. Uh, that one is actually just based off... Um, it started as some, an adaptation of a legend from the region of Aveiro. And like the, uh, it has the lighthouse and you know about the lighthouse in uh, uh, in Ilo, right? Uh, with yeah, it's a lot of in Europe. And so I kind of get, got that idea about uh, a lighthouse in the dark and I started writing about that. So we have this uh, adventure that is set in a world that only knows, the only light that exists in this world is because of the lighthouse. <coughs> oh. I think damn, we may damn, 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 damn. Ah. Wait. Wait, he returns. Wait. I, I think he's freezing a bit. Oh, I'm freezing? That, it was I think just... you're back. Yeah, now you're back. Uh, you were oh. saying that about how the lighthouse uh, in uh, Soul for the the only. Okay, I didn't hear the second half of the question. Sorry. Uh, I was just recalling how uh, you said that the lighthouse in Soul for the Ocean Dark is the only light source. Yeah, the only source. Yeah, the only source of light, and then. Uh, it goes dark, and the, the PCs go in this adventure through darkness as they are encroached by all sorts of monsters and demons to save their world and bring light back. Um, it is a very grim dark adventure, I think Ian will agree with me. Especially depending on how you run it. Um, it can be yeah. grim or... Uh, like, it's definitely a... Uh, some form of creation myth uh, adventure you know, I actually always think exactly. about it. and that, that's what I've been that's how I've been pitching it so it better be like that or I'm in trouble Yeah, um, <laughs> you have this this corner of reality it cannot become something bigger it depends uh, on you guys yeah. you the players <laughs> and one of the big things is that um, uh, when the players all start is if they're this is the nice thing about this is this is an adventure design so that you can start as local villagers who start in or uh, the another way you can be introduced is being the heroes out of time and space that have been called in desperation and that's how i have been throwing people into it every once in a while so if you want to start at first level heroes you can actually play this as a level one adventure um i have a tendency to run our first one and then run people through this one at the second. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. We actually uh, built it to work in that way, so we can start it anywhere we want. To. I, I'm. I'm. One of the, one of the ways is very similar to um, uh, chaos and the intrigue in the court of chaos. Is their intro to that is just being big pulled into another dimension. <laughs> And uh, when, when Curtis wrote that one, he's just like, just, just do it. It's fine. You know, you don't, you don't have to have players run onto every hook to get to the adventure. Sometimes, sometimes it's fine if it just literally lands in their lap. So <laughs> this, this one's definitely an adventure that's like, it happens to you. And yeah, the call to adventure is really in your face. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I really felt it uh, yesterday. So <laughs> I, I'm hoping to. I'm hoping to end the adventure, but I won't spoil it to any anyone. Um, I'm uh, I I have placed your uh, website, the Keep Studios, and the Soul for the Ocean Dark is our main uh, the main image. So what what do you say uh, for the people to to what what they can get in the Kickstarter? It's just an, another question that I want to. Well, I mean, what we're starting with now is. Um... One of the big things that I've been actually working out the last few days, we have the quotes and everything for the art, and that's what we're looking to um, fund, is really uh, funding our illustrations, which we will have yeah. a whole lot of them. If you, especially if you go check out the preview for Soul for the uh, Sword in the Jungle Deep, it's the only problem with having a naming scheme, they draw them together, uh, <laughs> is that we have like really great art that yeah. we're really proud of. But yeah. we're also really proud of, we pay our artists 
and we actually pay them, um, which and we don't pay them on hopes and dreams. We pay Francisco on hopes and dreams, but you know, I need to pay. Them. <laughs> That's <was> so good. <laughs> okay. Honestly. Yeah, guilty. I need to pay him more. I need to pay him so much more. Um, but uh, what we're starting with in like the lowest ends of it is we're going to start. You can get um, the book in the adventure in PDF. And you can get it in print. And what we're going to do is we're fulfilling everything through um, drive through RPG. We're going okay. to use their fulfillment service. And one of the interesting things we can do is we will not include, because they're a print-on-demand service, we won't include the printing and shipping cost so that we won't have to just drastically inflate prices. So yeah. when we ship to Portugal, it'll you'll actually just pay at cost. So it's the lowest we can get it for everybody doing it that yeah, way. That's very clever. Um, but that also means the problem what you have when you run a Kickstarter is if you have to include shipping into the Kickstarter rewards, Kickstarter then counts that as part of the goal, even though yeah. it doesn't get anyone anywhere close to there. So you get this weird like creeping effect where it'd be like, well, this will only cost us X, but because we know we're going to have to call, pay the shipping, even though like that's still going to be included all your costs, so now it's X plus, you know, ten dollars or something like that. Um, where I mean, you always have to like overestimate. I don't want to do that. I want to get the lowest cost to people to get their stuff. Um, so it's going to have the adventure. We are going to have the pretty reasonably low stretch goal actually we want is we want to be able to make decks of cards because there's a lot of encounter tables in this that are um, like oh you you go through a certain place and one of a few encounters might happen like this was a book very much written for road crew judges and people who are going to be playing at new people and conventions all the time and also just the thing where you can kind of like continue running the world if you want it <laughs> afterward so you have these random encounter tables but if we could have them as decks of cards that were like, here you go, guys, pick your fate. Yeah. And then and the encounter is all on the card, and you can just put it down, read it, the monsters are statted out and all there. That's a big thing we liked. Um, which isn't too hard, and drive through RPG does do playing card printing. So yeah. that would really be awesome. And we really want to get that. Yeah, the, I was uh, I was uh, uh, giving this question, and it's not in our guidelines. But because I want to uh, highlight one thing that uh, Rolling Steve, as a content creator, also we also have patrons that uh, help us with our illustrations because we also want to pay artists to uh, to do the illustration, without, not with uh, dreams and stuff. Uh, yeah, um, so only writers. Only, only writers, yeah, <laughs> because <laughs> writers just want uh, fame, yeah, and you are already ah. famous. Come on, Francisco. Um, so right. the next no, question: no, no, <laughs> uh, Which game features are the strongest in uh, Soul for the Ocean Dark? What the parts that you uh, prefer? What's your uh, the best parts that you would like most? And it's for Francisco or Ian. That's okay. Uh, I'm gonna let um, Francisco start with that. Yeah, because I want to know. <laughs> <laughs> Good one. Uh, I really like the encounter tables. It's one of the things that, if this issue wasn't as it is, we probably wouldn't have that idea, uh, because this is all based on randomness and uh, uh, tables that give you results. As uh, one of the players said, it is random and hilarious, um, <laughs> and. Uh, well, I really like to work on that and how um, the adventure runs differently each time you play it. So each time you reach a new location, what may happen may be completely different from one player to the other. You may just see strange things that make you insane, or you may fight for your life. You know? And I really like that randomness. And even if a player plays the same adventure several times, you will never know what we'll expect. Uh, I think it's a very strong feature. I also like the lore that we created for this, yeah. and how uh, the, the lore itself and how the characters discover the details of this lore kind of creates a sense of uh, anxiety and, uh, um, and forces them to really act on the moment instead of just wandering around mindlessly. 
uh, I, I think we managed to create a, a mood for the adventure that uh, we wouldn't have otherwise if we didn't invest in creating some lore for this. Yeah. What about you, Ian? What's your favorite feature? I have, I have <laughs> parts. I have the, I have the reasonable favorite feature that the intellectual person enjoys. <laughs> And I think my favorite is, it is the lore, but it's it's how the story works and how everything and how running through it as a player works feels to me like, and I don't know if you've read this book or not, but it feels to me like um, running through an adventure on something like Earthsea or something like that. Something It's a very small world or it's a very compact world. So you feel like you're in a big impact, even though... Uh, you know, oh, you're from a village. You're like, okay, yeah, but that doesn't affect the wider world. You're like, yeah, no, it does, because the village is the whole world. Like, it's everything in existence, and I love that, that it feels so immediate and tenacious about that. And the excited 12-year-old in me has one word to say, crabstrosities, you will not read me that. <laughs> crabstrosities are the greatest thing ever. <laughs> And when that was not going to be their name, it was only the scribbled in like prototype name of the artwork. I went, unacceptable. They're crabstrosities now. <laughs> Francisco can confirm that. I went, no, they're yes. crabstrosity. Yes. We thank Andrew for creating that name. It was a moment of genius. Uh, what, do you, what do you call it in Portuguese, Francisco? Capstrosidade. Capstrosidade. <laughs> I don't know what that means. It's capstrosities. No, it's it's a new word in Portuguese, and it was awesome because yesterday in the in the role improviso in pro, improvise role uh, program, uh, it it was the first time that we listened to it. So it was what what the fuck is that? Come on, <laughs> it was <laughs> running you through. Seen one yet. Yes, I didn't. I didn't. Maybe I didn't you saw will. Oh, they kill a lot of people hope you don't yeah we we just saw uh, the the footprints <laughs> when uh, one of the my favorite features and i i just uh, ran the, a little bit of the adventure was the feeling that you have uh, really to do something or else because uh, it, it was everything was just happening in that moment uh, you have decided that you are the heroes and you're going to start this boom next one uh, now the, the the light is gone you have to do something go find something you have to do it and the time is always uh, clicking uh, and that was the feel that I that that I like very much but I really liked it was a funnel so I expected that everything could happen at any time so I was expecting to roll uh, luck and just a piano in my head or something like that because that was I that was what I was expecting. Uh, that was that is my main feature that I like the, the most, but maybe it's just uh, true all DCC uh, RPG Final Adventures, I don't know. But at least with Francisco yesterday, it feel like this. The, we have to run for it or, or else. <sighs> Not all funnels have uh, the ticking clock feature. I've played various ones. They see... They're really good for keeping people going and not just yeah. stopping and just being like, well, we should take an hour on this problem. It's like, nope, I don't care what this is going on. Yeah. Um, we also declared early on in our – that ticking clocks are fine. Referring to thing in turns, as DCC uses the idea of a turn, which is 10 minutes <laughs> and a round of combat – so when it's like, oh, once a turn, I was like, once every six seconds. So I ran a funnel, which was supposed to have something happen once every ten minutes, and I had it happen once every six seconds. That was a real fast funnel, I'll tell you that. <laughs> it worked. I don't know how, but it worked. Jet-powered so, meat grinder. It was <laughs> stressful for everyone. <laughs> oh, my, that's so good. <laughs> So tell me, um, what about uh, secrets that we haven't really seen uh, on the playtests? Something that had been hiding beneath the surface. Can you talk us about anything that you think is going to blow us away that's hidden within um, Soul for the Ocean Dark? Mm, yeah, the ending. And I'm not going to tell you what it is. <laughs> I'm with you yeah. on this. 
Yeah, like, he, I'm sorry, could you tell us a secret that will definitely be a spoiler? Go no. <laughs> I'm not going to. <laughs> it ends. It ends just right. <laughs> um, perfectly uh, seasoned. I, I, I know there is a puzzle. There's a puzzle somewhere in the middle because I've tried it. <laughs> um, oh, yes, the, I know that one. <laughs> You heard it here, folks. The puzzle yeah. is a lie. I'm, I'm That's hoping, I'm hoping to see the illustration of the panels uh, where the, that uh, puzzle is written, and I, I really want to see a little bit of the room where the the statue and everything the in, in, in the, the the chapel, or not not yeah. the chapel, the the temple. Uh, I really, I really uh -huh. would. I really would love to see because the the description that Francisco uh, did in the uh, in the prototype yesterday it was awesome and I really hope to see some something visual in the uh, in the book. Yeah, I really yeah, hope. Yeah. yeah. One of the reasons that we didn't is because the description of that because we're that's the thing that keeps getting like that the the whetstone keeps getting hit on that specific one and we keep being like oh how about this and making francisco write more yeah. all the time on that on that specific one because we're like this needs to be just right um but yeah we're thinking like a handout in the back of the book um i say i have been thinking that that's one of the things we'll do and um i might ask elena who did our cover art mm -hmm. um and who did the map for for in the jungle deep uh to do that one for us uh because that's like right up her alley. Yeah. Uh, Lonnie, uh, who does like all the rest of our interior illustrations, is amazing and awesome. Um, but Elena, like Elena's really good for that like fine detail work, and especially mm -hmm. like a, more, a somewhat more painterly style, even in her black and white image. So I was thinking like more uh, appropriate for her to do that. Yeah, I, 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 I Lonnie just suddenly appears and goes, "No, it's mine." And, <laughs> yeah. And me this thing. Okay. Um... <laughs> Especially if we meet all of our goals, and I'm like, I'm going to need a lot art on the back of cards now. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Uh... Oh, do we have a, another question? Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, we still have another question. Um, so the book is finished. I presume that you are only waiting on the the final art. To... For the most part, um, we are like the layout's all done. We are doing some editorial, like spelling things like that. Yeah. Keep going through it because you do that. Um, there are a couple encounters that we don't love enough yet. Um, they work pretty well. Pretty well isn't good enough for us ever. Um, but that's kind of just keeping us occupied in the meantime while we wait for to run the Kickstarter, which is going to be. Far too soon. I, I'm planning to launch the 22nd of this month, so cross your fingers on that. Um, actually, from what I've seen so far, I don't fun. Just don't know. breathe. And all my evil schemes. Um, but yeah, they we're going to try and keep it like within reason, and uh, I'm. Um, okay. I, I missed the last the last phrase. I said uh, I was like, oh, I just realized I was rambling and forgot the original question. And then tried to <laughs> capture it. And, uh, yeah, the, the book is almost finished, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. It is. It's just small oh. stuff that it be tweaked, and we are kind of working on. So you've already started promoting it, because we, we can already see it on the the, the Keep Studio website. Uh, you're already talking about. Um, the Kickstarter campaign and talking uh, with Drive Through RPG and Drive Through Cards to get all the, the accessories and all the, the mm -hmm. book published. But what what other uh, tools are you using to promote the, um, this product? Uh, I'm mostly right now. I say word of mouth, but it's you know engaging in communities, doing what we do best, which is engaging in communities and talking to people. Um, we're pretty active actually on the DCC DCC Rocks group on Facebook also talk edit things like that um yeah our website which has the promo for it also has a sign up for the newsletter so if you're interested which you should be 
Yes, but um, if you're interested in it, you want to be on that newsletter because there will be a backer reward level, which is going to be better than the other one, like for the uh, le less expensive than for an early bird one. It's going to be limited. That's a thank you for everybody that signs up for our um, newsletter. There's not going to be that many copies. Um, like there's only so many that we're going to have at that lower level. And we're going to give those people like first shot before we run around on social media and just do like the loud cheer of it's ready um, we so already that, that's the group that yeah. we'll get told first we already uh, placed a subscribe to the newsletter uh, in stream so I hope that that's enough for us to get the early birth <laughs> we, we'll see yeah if they don't all go first <laughs> <laughs> okay so actually Let's see, you should have an advantage because it's going to be early in the morning for me, <laughs> which is much more reasonable for all of you. Might be lunchtime here. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Okay, um, so other than writing books and playing RPGs, uh, what other content does the Keep Studios have to offer? Um, well, we have our Twitch channel, which has actually been pretty excellent, a lot of fun um we actually have a game in that i'm running in a half hour that i'm <laughs> i'm both ready for and have never had a show immediately beforehand so we're about to find out what happens when ian hasn't looked at his notes in an hour before the game um which what should be fine name? um what's the name of our glorious uh, group of adventurers oh the revengineers the Revengineers. <laughs> Which is the ridiculous name I think we came up with when I was like, so what do you call Because that's how it happens. And then like something like a year later, they're like, you know, it's grown on me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, do, do you have a, a schedule oh. uh, in your Twitch channel? Um, we do. You can actually find it on uh, the keepstudios.com slash Twitch as well. We have that up there. Um, every Sunday is our D&D game. Uh, Tuesdays are Ben playing roguelikes, especially a lot of NetHack right now. Uh, Thursdays is actually me um, with my Nostalgia Night show where I play things from my childhood. Right now I'm playing all of the Mist games because Ooh. 25th anniversary Mist. Oh, man. Also, Mist. Actually, Riven ages surprisingly well. Mist. Mm hmm. hmm. Um, it's a game. Um, it's much easier than I remembered it when I was 10, <laughs> it turns out. Riven is still hard. Okay. If I didn't know some of the puzzles and know that certain things were numbers, I'd be screaming my head off at Riven. Um, but yeah, and then uh, Saturdays are our special events and things like that. So like last night, I was in a My Little Pony game again that just Ooh. runs. <laughs> Yes, I, I am a pony. I am, yes. I am not magical. I am actually like the mundane earth pony. Um, I play a character who's a good old country lad. You just run around, all do the good things, and who has a absolutely ridiculous equivalent of like a strength and constitution score. It's through the roof, and it's a running joke. Um, yeah, he's a lovable meathead. Um, but yeah, that, that's... That, oh, and... We actually took over Siege's normal Sunday night with his uh, family out. Okay, that's very good. You oh, also you also have a, a Discord uh, channel that you are very active. I, I saw it and I I'm a part of it, at least for knowing uh, everything that's going uh, happened about, about you guys. Um, and what other projects are on the horizon for the Keep Studios? Well, the big ones, um, well, I've already spoiled the one, is the Compendium of Powers and Patrons, because Secret. somebody has to ask me what my favorite thing is. <laughs> um, yes, that, that's the one that's not, like, we're not, we're, we're kind of announcing now, um, but that's in development. Um, yeah, we're still in the so writing cool. stage of that. Although, we're pretty far along on that. Um, I should add, fairly recently, I started doing this full-time. So suddenly we went from, well, maybe this will come out into, oh, this takes months, if that. Oh, that's weird. Um, so yeah, we've been tearing through that. And then the next project is the, um, the Great Portuguese Translation Project, which is translate all of our stuff Portuguese. 
because we're in one of the rare spots where we have someone who can do that for us. Yeah, <laughs> for going free. Hey, oh. he's going to get paid. <laughs> awesome. Oh. At least. <laughs> okay, that's that's very good. Um, and that brings a, a very good question uh, for us at almost at the end of our show because Ian has to prepare himself for the session. And uh, that is, and I think, uh, Juki, we've talked about a question that we could do in, in the post conversation uh, because we, yeah. we we're going to do it with at least Francisco because Ian is occupied. Um, is it? Is it possible, or is it, or how do you think it is that it's possible to uh, different countries and uh, different channels and uh, different content creators to work together uh, in a form of partnership, or what are the the pros and cons of getting uh, get together for something like that? What what are the the, uh, the the means of doing something like that, and what is the pros and cons? Uh, For everybody, that's a question that we we would like to get answered because we are starting now, and uh, Portuguese community is very tight community, and uh, we don't have any. I think that we don't have any RPG uh, game uh, came out, came out yet, uh, and we thought that 2019 would be a very good year to start uh, something like that, or even help someone. To start something like that because Roll Initiative is all about helping others. It's a platform, uh, so we have our own RPG to to produce. However, we have we want to learn from uh, people that already do it, like you guys and like other uh, guests we had and we'll be, we'll ha be having, um, so we can learn and help other people that want to uh, launch their games uh, into the Portuguese community. So. I think this is is going to be a question that's going to be answered or partial answered with Francisco in the post conversation, um, and I would uh, like to ask you guys if you want to say anything else for uh, the stream and for the YouTube uh, uh, people that we're going to see it later, uh, so we can end our stream and do Ian prep for the their session. So guys, it's your time to to shine again. Start? Oh look, Hennick. Oh, uh, I was going to say I want. I really want to answer the question you just asked. Uh, actually, um, from from my point of view, uh, one of the great things of having it is it's really hard when you're in, the, especially like the U.S. or anything like that. Working with the European Union is and within it, it is very weird. Um, <laughs> I mean, from working from the outside into it, it's probably the same working with the European Union into the US because it's actually very similar where like these two separate not necessarily seeming overlap Venn diagrams but when you have people in, on a team on both sides suddenly it becomes a lot more accessible so that's actually been a great thing for us because Francesco uh, obviously lives there and is you know, native um, understands the things there but it's also things like that I look at that and I just go what how do I even um, and it's actually a lot simpler when you have they call it an agent in the EU and things like that like, oh no yeah he lives there he's just going to receive the goods and then um, all that will come across fine <laughs> but yeah and it's also just great working with anyone who has a very unique perspective um, and like a fresh perspective on uh, I think really especially like in the industry because you get a lot of people who are very entrenched um, especially in the US so it's like industries get very entrenched, entrenched with experts who just know a thing and that's one of the great things working on him. The only difficulty is of course time zones because we managed to have someone on West Coast, East Coast, US, and Portugal, and boy, is that <laughs> a time yeah. to get those people together. We have a very narrow window where everyone is up at the same time. Oh, okay, guys. Um, uh, so uh, Joaquin? If, uh, oh, so, so just to make an announcement, I, I would like to say that I will be in uh, Marina Grande, uh, 16 March, Saturday to run a game of DCC with anyone who's interested to come by. She'll start by 14.30 o'clock and run until the game runs out. Uh, 
and then in May I should be in uh, Stareja for Riacon uh, in the days uh, 17 and 18 of May I should be in Stareja to run more games of DCC. Yeah. Surprise. Yeah, I think it's, it's yeah, I probably Stereja. should mention that we're going to be in Gen Con and Origins <laughs> as well, US. I'm like, I've just got, I've got a lot of juggling a lot. Uh, you sh- you should take Francisco to Gen Con. Well, <laughs> he makes it over here, sure. I'm not paying the guy, I can just buy his trip. <laughs> well, actually, like, we've given him, he's, he's gotten compensations but yeah he, we need to get like the royalties things worked out <laughs> okay um juki do you want to say uh, something for the end of the stream please there is a very fast question for you uh chat um what do ian and frank find more interesting uh, with the spirit of old school uh, revival in rpgs Dun, dun, dun. Yes, because you're... mine is actually pretty simple but surprising you are free from having to be good you you don't have to be good at everything you aren't expected to be competent all the time dice happen it's okay yes everyone's gonna die once it's fine we'll just roll up more characters there's a sort of existential dread that can happen in like 5e games where you're like, what if we all died? And in an old school game, they're like, what if we live? That's weird. <laughs> um, it's like, like, we all lived? What a fluke. And that's, a, that's sort of refreshing when it's just like, oh, I don't have to worry if, you know, in, I don't have to feel guilty that my dice didn't work out well, or I don't have to play it safe because it's like no I'm, I'm here to be a maniac and run at the dragon's face with a spear and put it inside of its mouth so it can't close its face because I'm a madman um, and it's nice to just return to madness yeah I, I agree with Ian on this um, I also think that I really like the low fantasy feel of some of these games like DCC it's not, it's not every like Lord of the Rings everyone's an epic hero that goes save the world uh, your character actually guys with weapons and some magic that try to survive and most times they don't. And this creates a feel, a feel that brings us back to things like Elric or Conan, uh, which yeah. are simpler, more uh, adventurous kind of fantasy that does not rely on existential drama and saving the world. And I really like that. I think it's really... Mm-hmm. Oh! I forgot a thing. Uh, oh, go ahead. Before go we ahead. have to go flying, um, Francesco struck my memory. Yes, we also wrote a free rule set for playing DCC Funnels to start and create your backstory for your 5e character. It is a background for a 5e character where you start running a DCC funnel, and it's called the Legendary Survivor. You can find it on our website. It's also on Drive Through RPG for pay what you want. So you can get the PDF for absolutely free. Go check it out. That's the thing I wrote the giant nerdy article about. I explained all the math of how it works. If you really like math and probability, go check that out, but you don't have to. It's on our website. It's on Drive-Thru RPG. You should be able to find it. <laughs> yeah, check that. It's really fun. Really, really fun. Okay, that's, that's, that is awesome. And we, we sure we when we place this video on YouTube, we'll get the, the link so it can be also attached to it. Uh, so guys, I really want to thank you for your time and I hope in the future we can talk about a little bit more, Ian, uh, because the narrow time, it's <laughs> we know yeah, it's, I it's know. short, I know. Um, so, but uh, after we, we end the stream, I just want to say that tomorrow we don't have the Monster Monday because we want to, Andre, uh, rest a little bit with this uh, amazing girl in Alentejo. Uh, so we will have... Uh, an improvised show that we'll, we're going to call it a GM's Appreciation Day because it's the 4th of March. Uh, and we will be open, it's almost like a podcast or vodcast that will be uh, answering questions in Discord and uh, telling stories about our favorite uh, DMs, not or GMs or storytellers or something, just people that we love uh, to share experiences with. 
So this is just an invitation for all of you that are uh, are listening to us. Uh, so tomorrow at 10 in the, the same place as, as always, we'll be in our Discord and we'll, if you want to talk about your experience, about your stories, about the people that you, you love uh, to play with, just come and play with us and talk with us. So guys, this is my last calling and we'll, we'll be having a surprise for tomorrow. So. Uh, Hang out for that. Guys, uh, Joaquin, last words, please. Thank you so much to our both our guests, to Ian Small, Francisco Duarte. We hope to see you again. We wish you the very best for, your, uh, for the launch of your next book, Soul of the for the Ocean Dark. Uh, and hopefully we'll see much more of you in the future with your so projects. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Studios. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Have a, a very good session tonight. Bye, Have guys. Have a good one. Francisco, see you, see you in a few minutes. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Good night.